for an adult audience. Love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Mm, listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Tom C and Nicholas is uh, here tonight from American Wedding, which is coming out. Is it this Friday? No, is it what the hell? The first a week from this Friday? I uh, I can't count that far in advance. It's August first. August first, everybody. <laughs> What's the date today, Drew? Twenty third. All right, then it's a week from this Friday, right? Hold on a second. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're you cool. Using a little cheat sheet over there. Yep. Yep. Week from Friday. I uh, I said to someone today, uh, what day is it? And, and the guy went, it's the twenty third. And I said, no, what what day? What what day? Of the week. Yeah, that's a, that's a bad sign. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Thomas was here uh, about a year and a half, right? a year and a half ago, uh, two years ago. So you're asking me to count again? Mar- about March March fifteenth, two thousand one. What the hell were you pushing back then? Was it was it American Pie? American Pie two. Oh, all right. Well, good to have you back. Yeah, and this is uh, this is the so last I, one. Yeah. Will sorry. I only be back if I do American Pie four, or what's the deal? No. Uh, there will yeah, be no sadly, more. sadly, yes. No, there will be no four. So you'll never be back. You shan't be back. No, uh, when you do uh, Stealing Sinatra, which is uh, a movie that uh, Thomas finished uh, recently, he can uh, come back and plug that one. That is uh, the true story about when they kidnapped uh, Frank Sinatra Jr.? Yeah, 1963, kidnapped. Took him, uh, snatched him up from like uh, Lake Tahoe or... Took him on the road. You know, I don't. I don't know if a lot of people know this did story. Know, it's a did true, not know it. true story. Yeah, it. Uh, they. I mean, we tried to. You know, we stayed true. Court transcripts. He was. Uh, you know, taken from Tahoe. He was doing a gig up there. Had his band, and they put him in the trunk of the car and drove back down to Los Angeles and had him held up in a house for, you know, about a week or so. When, this is Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra Junior. Junior. His son. His son. It's like in the 60s. Six, 1963. December. 63. Yeah, they and it was kind of weird. They they it was a cu- couple of bumbling guys who maybe were flunkies and knew each other from high school or something. It stopped me when I screw this up. Just snatched him up, brought him back, and just brought him to some, like, valley house or something. Yeah, the one the two guys went to high school with them, and they got the one, John Irwin, who William H. Macy played, mm-hmm. who was, like, the older father figure involved. <laughs> And they just were sort of sat in like a valley house and just uh, looked at him for a few days. Yeah, they were planning on getting like uh, Barry. Now I'm totally spacing on the the real guy's name, but he was planning on getting like 200 grand, right? And investing it and then paying back the ransom. That was his whole. That's how he got out with like not that uh, that with but a light sentence. How do you prove that you're planning on investing <laughs> the yeah. guy's ransom and paying <laughs> paying dividends on it back to the? But here's the whole thing. Now, there was always a, there was always a little uh, cloak of mystery around it, which was it was sort of unclear whether Frank Sinatra Jr. was like really like kidnapped, like Patty Hearst kidnapped, or this kind of kidnapped. Well, no. What what happened was this girl came in as like a publicity stunt, and she like was saying that he she knew that he rigged the whole thing, that he was part of it, and she was just trying to get press. But it was never proven in court. But that was the whole it myth around it that he was. And there must have been some allegations about the mob in there somewhere. Well, of course, yeah. I'm sure there's something something about that. It seems doesn't seem like a great guy if uh, all you heard was true about Frank Sinatra. It doesn't seem like a good kid to snatch up. Yeah. But then what happened to him? Say, well, they end up bumbling the whole thing, and what happened? Um, well, you don't want to give away the movie, but well, <laughs> well it's a true public, story. Public though. Public. <laughs> true. Yeah, but uh, people don't know about it. No, I mean there. Essentially, he he came he came home like the John Irwin character let him go, right? And he identified. Every, I mean, that's how it happens in the movie. I, you know, honestly, I didn't read the tr- the court transcripts and he myself, ne- so he, he never really. And, and then, so the guys that were convicted of kidnap and kidnap used to be like a capital offense. Doing, yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, I guess since uh, Lindbergh or something, you could get the death sentence for kidnapping. Never seemed to really get that bad a sentence. They did some time, right? Well, they did like I don't know what it was, but it was it was ridiculously like just small, like eight years or something. Or, what happened to Frank Sinatra's son? What's he doing now? He's, he's touring he, with his dad's music. I went and saw a show after I finished the movie. Wow! My grandfather actually used to open for him as a stand-up comedian. Wow! Um, back in the day, and he recited like some of my grandfather's jokes. Sounds like your Slappy family. Nicholas. Yeah, yeah. And the family's a laugh a second. Yeah, they're real entertaining. 
especially when they're being serious. Uh, it's just that, yeah, Frank Sinatra Jr., I think, was the arranger for Frank Sinatra for a long time. Wow. I mean, he was... He he did all the stuff. It was like the band leader and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, he was really into music, and his dad never wanted him to be in music. Huh. So everything he did, he did on his own. It's really like, he's really a tragic character. So even though the film's a comedy, like, I was able to play this, like, and you, tragic person that's just constantly beaten down. And you were uh, you were Frank Sinatra Jr. Did, did he, does he sound like uh, Frank Sinatra? Did you have to put on anything for him? Um, no, I just, I mean, I got to sing some big band tunes, which was fun. Oh, you did? Did you, yeah. you actually sung? I actually sung. Like, the day before I left to go film, they popped me in the studio, and I sang it myself. So I lip-synced to myself on the set, which was kind of odd. So, yeah, I guess you can sing then, right? I can sing. I have a, I have a band, and it's different. It's different to do, like, syncopated right. vocals, big band, crooning sort of stuff. But, I do uh, uh, I do Hell is for Children by Pat <laughs> Benatar. You know that one? Yeah, I've, I've seen yeah. you do it. It's, at the, it, it's Drew. Yeah, I, you know, I don't like to brag about myself, but it is a powerful, powerful song if you ever see me do that. Well, well just, that's interesting. That movie comes out in 15 months, and then <laughs> the movie you're here to plug tonight, uh, American Wedding. <laughs> well, can now, I, plug my, my can I plug my other flick? Yeah, or, go ahead. Uh, I'm working on uh, my directorial debut, actually. No, I hate you. Oh. Wait, you're already 21? <laughs> 23. Oh, Christ. <laughs> I was putting down carpet when I was 23. Yes, when is that coming out? Uh, well, no, we're wait, still you, you have, you'd moved on to ditch digging by that point. Probably. <laughs> probably moved up to ditch digging. Yes, when is this? What is it called? When is it coming out? Uh, it's called LADJ, and we're still finishing up post-production right now. So What's it about? Uh, it's about uh, two brothers. Um, my brother Tim and I wrote it together. So it's two brothers, they live in a small town, they dream of becoming famous club DJs. So they go to L.A. to try to break into the club scene, and they get stuck DJing bar mitzvahs. <laughs> I'm guessing it's a comedy. Yes, indeed. Good. And you might be, get to do a little bit of singing in it, or bad rapping or something? Uh, a little <laughs> scratching, maybe? A little scratching, and I put, I put one of my tunes in the movie for one of the montage sequences, because it's a DJ film. My stuff's like kind of rock, so there's not really like singing or rapping right. or anything. So you can uh, look for uh, L.A. DJ to come out uh, soon. But uh, also you got to go out and see uh, American uh, Wedding, which is coming out on the 1st of August. Let's go to the phones and speak to uh, Christina, who's 17. Christina, Hi. what's up? Uh, I'm calling because I uh, want you guys to tell me if this thing that I've been doing since I was a really little kid is masturbation and why I would be doing that when I was a little kid. I would um, lay on my stomach and put my um, my hands underneath, like, uh, my body, and I would, like, rock on top yeah. of them. Yeah, we hear about this sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Kids yeah. do that. Did you do it until orgasm, or did you do it until... No, I've never had an orgasm before. All right, so yeah. there you go. Do you still do that now? Yeah. Like, I, I still have never really put my fingers inside... Mm -hmm. You probably don't need to. It just doesn't feel very good. Right. Yeah. It's just it's just a way of self soothing as much as anything. And the, the, yeah. But let me tell you, if I if I try something and I get no orgasm, I move on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't go back to that well. Yeah. That's why you just stay with the masturbation. Stay with what? When I found out what works, I, it. I stayed with it. That's right. So uh, so that is masturbation, even well, though I never go inside. Yo, oh, yes. Most women. <laughs> it do is. Not, most women do not go. No inside. orgasm. Yeah. It's just you haven't quite figured out how, how to have an orgasm yet. You never, hold on, you've never put your fingers in yourself? Well, actually, yeah, I guess I have, but it just, I don't do it often because I Most don't Most of them do not put their it. fingers inside for masturbation. Really? Uh -huh. That'd be, that's, that'd be nonstop for me. No, you wouldn't because you, you, <laughs> like, you like the penis. No, I'd, be, I'd be opening bottles. I, I'd be using it for everything. Jars. Be much more than just a baby hatch or place to urinate out of. I'd be using it for stuff. Christina? Yeah, so there's, like, nothing yeah. weird or strange going on that I was doing that when I was, like, five? Well, if you needed... Sometimes when kids need sexual soothe, you know, sexual oh, stimulation as a form of soothing, it's because there's a lot of chaos in their life. There was nothing that I so, can remember. Okay, then you're that's fine. Then it's fine. It's you're fine. fine. It's okay. Fine. Uh, you're, you're virgin now? No. So something's been in there. Well, yeah, but I didn't... Well, that's another thing. I, I didn't uh, like it, really. Really? I, I was 16. Maybe I was too young. I don't know. Yep. All right. That's a yes. So you gotta wait a little while. And you'll be in, wait, wait till you're in love. Okay. Wait till you think you're in love. Okay. All I right? I think so. But it doesn't matter. Anyway, I love your show. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. You got All a right. guy? You dating? Oh, 
Oh, no, not anymore. You looking for somebody? I uh, guess. Thomas, how old are you? <laughs> Thomas is, is 23, but his agent says he can go as low as 15. Are you going away to college? Uh, yeah. Where are you going? Um, BC. What? That's not away. No, I guess I'm not going away. All right, but she's going to Boston <laughs> okay. College, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, good times. Okay. You're, you're, now, your roommate's going to bust you doing that rocking thing a couple times. I know. Yeah, I've learned that I shouldn't do it in front of people, but it was pretty awful when I, like, when I was about, I don't know, like, nine, and I figured out that it was kind of weird to do in front well, of people. Well, what happened? I don't know. Like, my, my, whole, uh, my whole life, I was always, I didn't understand, so. No, my but when you figured always, it out, what happened? Uh... I don't know. I guess it was like a, a slow thing. It didn't happen. All right. True. True. When true whenever <laughs> True thinks he's going to coax a fascinating story out of one of the callers, does it ever go anywhere? Never. Darryl? Never. I'm going to keep... won't prevent me from trying, though. I'll keep a uh, squirt gun filled with, like, vinegar or something in case my kid ever starts doing that stuff. Or you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, yeah, if I catch him whizzing, I'm, I'm basically, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to work him like a cat. Right, right. And I want him to stay off the furniture. I know I'm doing that ass tap him on thing. the nose? No. Uh, I will if they're within range, <laughs> but I don't want to have to get up. So th hence the squirt gun. You know what I mean? I need something I can get at them. You know, I can get some range with them. They, I mean, make, some, they make some good squirt guns nowadays. Yeah. I, I don't want to ruin the house, though, so I'm looking for something that's accurate but yet doesn't puddle too much. All right. Drew, what should you do if your kid is going at itself that way? Vinegar and a squirt bottle. Okay. That's what I thought. <laughs> Chris? Year 25? Yeah. What's up? Um, my wife, she's bored with the traditional sex that we're having. We're mm -hmm. having it like five to six times a week. Oh, no. She not, might not be bored. Well, what do you mean? I don't know. She's just not really getting aroused that much. She says she wants to try new stuff, but every time that we do it doesn't really work. Maybe mm -hmm. it's just too much for her. Um, I don't know. She, she usually comes on to me, though. So, like, do you guys have any ideas as to what else to do? Well, you need more information. Hold on a yeah. second. This uh, smells bogus, smells yeah. bo bogus yeah, to me. Yeah, but I think it's just him. I think did you just, wait, did you just click that off? That was no. The, I just put him on hold so oh, we can talk without gotcha. him uh, yeah. getting in, getting in our way. Chris, yeah. what is her suggestion? Give us a specific suggestion she's given you to spice things up in the bedroom. I don't know. She she's tried anal a couple times, but she doesn't really like it. It hurts her. And then she's the, tried anal. Yeah. Right. What with you, with one of your friends? With one of my friends. You know what I mean? The way he says it, it's like, well, she did this and she did that. And oh, no. We do. It. Me and her. Uh, yeah, you, you, you would say we you, we have tried anal, like yeah. when I talk about Drew. Yes. Yeah, I don't, we say don't just he's try tried anal. I say we've tried anal. We say we perform. That's right. We executed okay. anal. <laughs> okay. All right. So Me and my wife have executed anal. I'm sorry. Right. Okay. And she doesn't really like it. She says that hurts. All right. So what else is she right, but So, remember, you know, when something hurts, don't do that yeah, again. Right. Remember 10 minutes ago I said give us a, give me a yeah. specific thing that she requested? Yeah. He's, now we're going to get process of elimination. Yeah, well, we tried like. this. Here's what she doesn't like. Tell us what she suggested most recently. She Most recently she just suggested that we don't even have sex, that I just try to finger her. And she doesn't even like that. She just doesn't really like it when I even go inside her. Yeah. she ever been abused? Um, I don't think so. She's your wife? Yes. You never discussed things like that with her? No. So, yeah, I, I'd say the less you know, the better as far as any, any relationship. I mean, let's face it. Whether it's a guy you pick up hitchhiking or someone you marry, it's like you don't need to know everything. Yeah. Let's face it. A little less, uh, less history, more mysteries, what I say. Uh, we, we can't get a read on Chris at all because Chris can't get a read on Chris or his wife at all. There's, there's something yeah. seriously going on, and it's either bogus or you're just way out of whack with, in your relationship. Oh, okay. Well, like, I don't know. I've heard, like, last night there were a couple of callers that they said, like, weird stuff. Like, I don't know. One of them did, like, the whole s'mores thing. What is that? Oh, so uh, we're yeah. Bogus. All right. yeah. Yeah, this is bogus. Come on, Chris, please. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm serious. No, it's you're not serious. And and listen, you were bogus from the word go because you're you're so teeny. You're you're paper thin. You know what I mean? You hear people's voice, there's nothing behind it, there's no energy. It's kinda it just it, you know what it's like? It's like it's like the difference between looking at a piece of solid wood like a maple cutting block and a <laughs> thin veneer. Yeah, yeah. Thin veneer, some yeah. bad piece of furniture no, no at depth. your seventies no, no. dentist office, you know. <laughs> 
It's still got the wood grain, but somehow you can tell it's only a sixteenth deep. Yeah. That that was Chris. This there was nothing there. Yeah. Balsa wood right behind it. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> right. Particle board. Cheap particle board. Nicole? Yeah. I'm looking for some clear dug fur. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm looking for two by or four by stock too. Okay. All right, which they call eight quarter. Go ahead. Um, I is there any way that a person can actually be allergic to condoms? Oh sure, the latex is rather common. Does it feel like a like a yeast infection? Yeah, it can. It can, or it can be a yeast infection. Sometimes just uh, you know, sort of having something in there will disrupt the immunity. You know, the sort of the plant life down there. Flora and, and the fauna. Yeah. And set up uh, yeast infection. But uh, you might want to try polyurethane condoms. Okay. Trojan makes those as well. Hey, Nicole. Yeah. This is, uh, it's not my idea of uh, clear 4 by 6 dug fur here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> need a little more depth. No, we're sort of looking at like Pergo now. Yeah. It's kind of in between. Yeah, we're looking at a durable, pre-finished uh, flooring from Europe. <laughs> I'm looking for some sort of, I'm looking for like Bostonian, turn of the century handcraft. I'm looking for quarter sawn oak. What do you got for me? Okay, um, we were, we've been, we've done it for like five days straight. Mm hmm And the last day after we had finished, I went to the bathroom and I wiped myself, you know, and it, it was burning. Well, okay. maybe just too much activity, just friction. Yeah, five days straight. Yeah. Nonstop? Nicole, this is I IKEA. This is the furniture <laughs> you put is together. This yeah. is Scandinavian furniture. This is bad <laughs> Scandinavian furniture. Are you, uh, or did it hurt when you peed? Not, not a lot. It burned a little bit. All right, so, again, you probably need to be checked out. Do you have pelvic, pelvic exams regularly? Yeah. When was your last exam? Um, about... Two months ago. Yeah, maybe time to get back, check things out. If you know, just to see, make sure it's not some other kind of infection. Make sure there's no urine infection. See if there's maybe a, a latex allergy from the condom, and maybe try polyurethane in the meantime, and sort of slow down the activity. Lots of lube, so you don't frictionize yourself. Lots of lube would be a good name for a band. Lots of lube. Hello, TSA. My uh, my, yeah. my cousin's friend always had a an idea for a band name. Call it Free Beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've heard that. Free before. Beer tonight. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it gets, gets people in the door. Then they're horribly angry by the time you go on, on stage. <laughs> but uh, but true, it, does get them, it does get them into the venue. All right, let's talk to uh, Rachel, who's 23. Rachel? Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't mind taking a home improvement question tonight, too. Oh, boy. If anyone has any of those. Brian, you got that? Wait, a home improvement question? Yeah. Brian. I'd like to mix it up a little once in a while. I got gotcha. you. Tell Brian, what's wrong? I could, I, could, I could get it on that. I need a little home improvement. I noticed you you, you, you peeled that pergo off like uh, like it was I nothing. Got, I got pergo in the kitchen. Really? Yeah. You do, do a remod at your place? Uh, a, a pretty big remod. You doing some of the work yourself? Uh, I did a lot of the demolition myself. Yeah, it feels good, right? Yeah. A little sledgehammer to the kitchen cupboards. Get a sawzall and a single chair and go to town. Rachel? Yeah. What's up? More on that later. <laughs> um, I have an ex-boyfriend who told me that um, he's relatively on the smaller side, but he told me that I was the loosest girl he'd ever been with. Yeah, it's nice. Well, yeah. This, uh, well, oh, 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 this is uh, Don Juan here. Right after that you broke up. That's nice. Up. But That's I, nice. Still, I still, I still, I get really wet when I have sex. So I attribute it to that. Yes, I, and to his size. Yes, it's, it's his. Well, but, but the the the. But that's what you. That's your only comeback when someone complains about your size or makes a crack about the size of your penis. You say, you know, it's not not the not the size of the the ball. It's the hoop. Is, right. Is, is too big. But he told me I was the loosest girl he'd ever been with. How it's, well? Yeah, I, the same I, size the whole time. It's much more likely. I, I, I know, but you know what I'm saying? That's what you would say if somebody said you were small. Well, especially if you're already broken up. It's, right. It's much more likely to be the lubrication than the size. But my current boyfriend has a really hard time coming and a really hard time getting off and will go for a long time. And that is not your fault. He seems well, to like... Well, to it's the, it is her fault. There's nothing you can do about no, it's it. Not, it's nothing to do with her size. No, no way. I, it's the lubrication. Yes. I even asked my doctor... What did he say? She was a girl. What did she asked, say? She said that... Hold I, on. They're letting broads... Uh, what was it? Some kind of... 
substitute doctor? They're letting broads uh, do this now, this doctor thing? No, I... What the yeah. hell is going on it's with this country? The Soviet Union, don't she worry. told me that I felt totally normal. great. <laughs> of course you're normal. Oh, she was... All right. Yeah, okay. you listen... Wait, she told you that you felt totally great? She said I feel fine. I have great <laughs> tone. <laughs> All right, you, you're fine. Well, there you, go. you believe the doctor, not your angry, bitter, small penis ex-boyfriend. Yeah, but now my current boyfriend can't get off. Yeah, but that yeah. has nothing to do with your anatomy. No, it has to do with the lubrication. Probably not even that. It's probably just him. He just probably takes forever to get off. Maybe oral sex is better for him or something. How about oral sex? How's I, that? I do know that he, I think he masturbates a lot. All right, so get him to stop doing that so we he can won't. actually. Well, okay. I like a man with principles, that. though. Yeah. He puts how, his foot down. how dare you? That is my first love. <laughs> That and legitimate theater. <laughs> Be gone. <laughs> Away with you and your mocking mouth. Rachel? Yes. Then it makes me... I, I, hold on. I like a guy who takes a stand for beating off. Like, I, I've, I've gotten to these discussions myself, but I'm always like, I put my head down. I, I see what I can do. You know, I make some sort of... <laughs> Something to sort of pacify him a little. Supposed yeah. To, no. Well, I'm not here of it. Yeah. I, I, go, I, I say stuff like, I'll look into it. I'll look into that. How do you get? No, no, you know, you, you, yeah, yeah, you're first, right. First, first, I argue. Right, yeah, yeah. Five times a day. That's normal. <laughs> that's normal. Talk to Rain, Chris. Those guys do it. The, uh, okay, well, what does that uh, matter anyway? How do you get into a discussion like that? Yeah, yeah. his wife <laughs> he has a little problem with what his <laughs> habits are. Oh, please. How well, dare you, Rachel? <laughs> yes. All right. So he it refuses. almost came up at dinner a couple of times. By the way, <laughs> dare you, it Drew. came close. I could feel it coming. Oh, you were just drunk and horny. <laughs> Rachel? Yes. No, she kind of went, it's because you and your, your, uh, oh, and then we please. went on to something else quickly. Listen, she, she knew, she knows who she married. <laughs> That's for sure. And you've proven it over and again. Rachel? Yes. Oh, hey, you. Rachel. Hey. Okay. Now, now, does he, when you ask him to slow down on the masturbation, what does he say? Um, he says, okay, but then, then we'll have sex and he won't be able to come. I'll be like, what's wrong? And he'll be like, oh, I masturbated this morning. And I'm mm. like, huh? Mm, I, and it makes me feel like yeah, there's some there's some up with him. Than, but what about oral yeah. sex? What does that do for him? Yeah, but still, it takes. What forever. does that do for him? It, it takes forever with oral sex too. Okay. Yeah, same thing. All right, then he's got a problem. Tell him to stop thinking about baseball. I've even tried like other stuff. <laughs> like I mean, like anal. And oh, okay. No, still. I'm like, I can't really take this for much longer. Okay, than me. then there's no other orifice left to explore. <laughs> You've done all you could. Yeah, this is his problem, not your problem. And if he won't adjust, then sometimes relationships don't survive. Can you yeah. can you have a problem like that? Can you create a problem like that? Oh, yeah. Because usually the problem is, like, not lasting long enough. Right, yeah. right. No, you can uh, have a problem where you can't ejaculate because you've sort of cleaned the tubes, you know. Right, right. You empty the tank so much. There's nothing there. Yeah, but 20-something-year-old guys who beat off a lot can beat off in the morning and be plenty good to go that evening with their gal pals yes. if, if they're not like this guy. Right. This guy has a weird issue. He's There's not a little he's intimacy not, problem right. He's not or even something interested like that. In sort of arrange, timing himself or anything. He just, whatever, forget it. No, but I, I don't think it's timing. You, oh, you think it's just... I, I, I think if... He's a, using it as an excuse, you think? Well, Drew, when you were 23, 24, and you were good to go, you, you'd take care of yourself in the morning and have plenty... L plenty left in the tank for that evening yes but if he was like if he's really overdoing it like three times a day or I, mean, I, I don't think that's it i think he's ashamed and he says maybe. i i, I did it today maybe. he's not doing it through anal he's not doing it through oral we'll never know he's ha no we i well, know but, he's but having I, difficulties yeah. but i don't understand you have this opportunity you're dating someone you're sexually active you know whatever you're being safe all that stuff why would you like i understand you want to masturbate yeah, yeah. like why wouldn't you want to time it right no he he would He's got this problem. He's, he's having a problem. There. He's saying he's saying it's not. He, he's just blaming the masturbation, but he really just can't be intimate and gets anxious. That ah, that's what's going on ah, because he, he if she told him not to do it, he would. You will admit to the sort of lesser charge. It's the, it's the Kobe Bryant syndrome. <laughs> that's the what Mr. I was Mina. about to say. Kobe Bryant syndrome. Any guy who's up there <laughs> sitting next to his new wife explaining how he banged some other chick ten minutes ago, uh, there's something. There's parts of that story that are still uh, yet to be told. That's uh, that's me. And we'll return to tell them. Thomas Ian Nicholas is here tonight from uh, American Wedding, the uh, last in the American Pie trilogy. You uh, remember him from uh, as Kevin from the uh, first two, and now in the third. Take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody.
everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Thomas Ian Nicholas is uh, here tonight yep. from American Wedding, which is uh, coming out on August 1st. And uh, those of you who saw the... Uh, what did the first American Pie gross, do you, you know? Uh, yeah, I can, uh, I can give you hard numbers on that. Box office was on American Pie 1 in 1999. Uh, July 9th, I believe it opened. It grossed like 100 mil. Jesus. Oh, whoa. And while it was in the box, while Just it was box at office. theaters. And it did, it did 100 mil on uh, DVD. Ugh. It did 100 mil foreign, which is total, which is big numbers for, yeah. for a world release on a, on a $10 million budget film. Holy F. Mm. So they and, so of course, you know, yeah. make some money, make a sequel. Sure. And you know, I was I was thinking about uh, when you said 100 mil a DVD, I thought you know what the key to uh, 100 mil a DVD is besides doing a, a good movie, have a titillating boob shot, have a, have a scene Shannon Elizabeth, have a little nudie scene because every 15-year-old in the United States will grab it because now they have control over the nudity. Whereas when you're in the theater, you're sitting there watching, and you're, hey, and what's this? Hey, ho, 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 it's over, it's over, what happened? Oh, you couldn't, like, you weren't ready for it, like, it came and went, you, you, you got, like, half a boner, but then there's confusion. Now you have the control. Well, DVD. Like, rewind, and it's stop, and it's clear. It's not like VHS. Kids today. <laughs> Kids too. There's no, there's no, like, tracking lines or the, you know, the... Just the buzz of the screen. Let me tell it's you, a clear picture. Let me tell you something, Junior. I held reel-to-reel <laughs> movies up in front <laughs> of the light. Okay? Uh, eight millimeter. No, eight or sixteen. No, eight Super millimeter. Eight, yeah. Super eight. So let me tell you how many millimeters are in an inch. <laughs> Guess how many millimeters in an inch? Sixty-four. Please. Twenty-five point something in an inch. But that means an eight millimeter is less than a third of an inch, okay? And then that's you got the you got the tractor, you know, got the tractor marks on the side and stuff. I mean, you're literally you're holding up, you're basically beating off to a kernel of a grain of rice. That's basically what I was beating <laughs> off to. Just holding it up in front of the light, no projector, just had the movie. Oh my god! Wow. Yeah, but you know what? Technology is grand. It really is, because I was miserable. I was well, going to say those were simpler times. The other key miserable. is make make two DVDs rated and unrated. Oh, so really? you can sell double. Oh, yeah. And there was that, too. And then the ultimate edition, of course. So three, really, on the first movie. Wow. And then the three-pack, of course. You know, you could do the the yeah. Christmas gift. Oh, man. <laughs> it just keeps going and going. Well, the, uh, the juggernaut continues uh, August 1st. Lucy? Yes. You're 19? Yes, I am. What's up? Um, well, I tried anal sex with my boyfriend uh, about a week ago. And the second time that we tried it, I, I told him to stop because it hurt. And then I didn't think much of it. We finished. And then the next day, I went to the bathroom, and I noticed I was bleeding. Mm-hmm. Good times. All right. And you don't see an association there? Oh, Drew, Do don't talk. I want to see how long can it'll it'll go. I didn't. Yeah. Uh, well, it didn't hurt. That's the thing. It didn't hurt like afterwards. You know, I, when I got home and uh, when I was at home, it didn't hurt at all. Mm-hmm. Therefore, all right. it could have nothing to do with your having a penis jammed up there. I I don't know. I'm. <laughs> well, let, let's do some math. Have you have you have you bled rectally before? the anal penetration. No. <laughs> All right. So this could just be happy coincidence. Well, Mr. Hume, just because the cue ball moves across the table, smacks into the other cue ball, and knocks it into the, the cup, doesn't right. mean there's any, so, any causative association there. Well, Maybe I would, just incidental. I would argue there was, okay. yes. Uh. All right. So, so we've narrowed it down to the penis. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, uh, so maybe you don't want to engage in this again. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, actually, that's why I'm calling. I'm wondering, you know, should I, I mean, is this, this isn't normal, right? <laughs> right. You're 19. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like you have a behind up there that broke the first time, and it's going to be smooth sailing from uh, this point on. Yeah. It may be more bleeding in, in your fact, future. In you, fact, you need to get this checked out. Do you? Okay. Could be a tear. Could be a, a fissure. All right, but here, let me say this, Drew. Hemorrhoid. People yeah, I was just w- went to hold off from going to the uh, ass doctor uh, the last possible moment. 
can you say that if she has some nice, healthy, brown BMs with no trace of blood for the next uh, week, that she doesn't have to go to the ass doctor? Yes. If it recurs, though, at any point in the future, go back. All right, Lucy. In the meantime, don't be putting stuff there. Yeah, keep okay. the weight off that ass the, for a couple of weeks. Co- keep it elevated. Cocaine balloons and the yeah, yeah, that's okay. it. Yeah, if you got to get a shiv into the joint for your boyfriend, or you're trying to mule or some a, heroin, or a car toy, or a okay. car toy, absolutely. All right, Lucy. Thank you. Good times. All right, let's uh, talk to. Uh, so, so this is a home improvement question, but it, it's, it's. I'm just. I'm thinking about what's the girl's name. It's a name? plumbing question. Mm. I, I don't like plumbing. Oh. Greg. Yeah, you're 22. I'm just thinking, hang on a second. The last call of night. How old is the, the girl that Jessica, the, the girl that was Lynch? The, Lynch. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Is she 19? Yeah. Wow. All right. Same age. The uh, the one who returned from yeah. Iraq. Yeah, my uh, my buddy is in the uh, army, and he busted her cell phone right before she left. Dropped it into a margarita, I guess, at a bar. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Before he was she like left in for Iraq. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he didn't get sent away, but he was stationed what? at Fort. What is true is coming on to her or something? Probably. I mean, that's, you know, that's my buddy. I mean, he's, you know. If she'd had that cell phone, Drew, she could have called in uh, for help. Fire Strike. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, nah, Air, Air Strike. It was. Uh, all right. It, it's starting to turn out like, uh, I mean, uh, I love this country more than anybody, but uh, it's starting to turn out like this wasn't quite the patriotic, heroic thing that we initially uh, grabbed onto. I, you know I, I, mean? never, I just thought it was somebody got wounded in action and uh, rescued. But the, 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 the whole thing was she was, like, shot, and she was stabbed, and then there was a heroic rescue. Uh-huh. And it turns out her injuries are caused by the accident, not she wasn't shot and stabbed. She it, was shot at, yeah. No, no, they, yeah. the car got, the convoy got into an accident. I mean, maybe because they were shooting, they were but shooting, she yeah. wasn't shot. Right, right, right. And she wasn't stabbed. She got in a car accident. Right. And then when she got rescued, some guy, like, wandered down the street and said, hey, there's some chick up in that room, and they walked up and got her. Yeah. It's still good news. Yeah, yeah. It's not, not, not the stuff, you know, no raid on Entebbe. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure my listeners know uh, raid on Entebbe. <laughs> Greg? Yeah. You remember Entebbe? No. We had to raid it. Green Berets? No. All right. Not so much. Go ahead, Greg. All right, um... My plumbing question was, I was wondering if there's a way to adjust, like, the pressure on a toilet. You got one of those low-flow jobs? I don't know. It just it doesn't seem to flush all the way. So sometimes you'll you know, you finish up, and you'll turn around, and it's still got stuff floating in it. Yeah. You, just, you, got, you got a double flusher there. Yeah. You got one of those You got one of those water savers, uh, yeah. 1.6 gallon. No, I mean, you just got to flush it midway. You got you to gotta double flush it during the... What, to get the tank empty or something? No, just to, like, when you're halfway done, if you, you know, oh. you're going to fill the... You, you gotta do two flushes. Two flushes. No, but like sometimes, like you'll flush it and you'll try to flush it again, but it it won't flush again. No, no, but means... you gotta wait for the tank to fill. You up. Fill yeah, up. I see what you're saying. Yeah, otherwise, otherwise it's just a dead. It's like a video game that goes bad. You know. You know that back of the toilet fills up with water. It fills up back up with water, but then it doesn't flush it down again. It just kind of floats back up. You checked the chain. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like you need new ballcock valves, son. Or couldn't it be? Couldn't it be the way to flow th- down? Like the, there's some clogging. I don't know. Listen, pull uh, pull the lid off the tank and take a look back there, all right? Uh, Do a little experimenting. But uh, don't make the mistake I did, which is actually cramping into the tank. Yeah, I did we'll... that for many years. Before. <laughs> no one told me. That's I... supposed to be clean water in case of an earthquake. You're not supposed to the... crap in there. That's right. That's, right? that's safety water. Maybe there. you're uh... I'll tell you, you know, that I, I, I bought a house a few months ago, a beautiful, big, green, old, high boy, just one of those high tank, art deco, green 20s toilets that went uh, with all the green tile in the bathroom and everything. The uh, water Gestapo uh, came in when the house was sold without me knowing it and uh, and very uh, sloppily and ug- ugly, if that's a word, ugly swapped out the toilet with some crappy water-saving uh, low boy. What? Yeah. With, yes. It le- left a big pipe hanging out of the wall and stuff. Where, it, where's the tank? Gone? They, no, they didn't take it. They just they just moved it aside. So mm-hmm. now I can pay for whatever. This, this, this goddamn city so effed up. It's uh, so it's, they converted it to low flow. Low flow, so you can have to flush four times every time you go. And save, right, so you're saving water. Yeah, for, for right? four flushes per. They, they converted <laughs> it to, to low flow. But here's the deal: the toilet was an old style toilet, and the toilet, the water. Now normally there's a. Uh, there's there's a valve somewhere around the floor, 
comes out of the wall. It's just a little less. It's called an angle stop. Comes out of the floor. It's got a little braided hose. Goes up to the tank from from the floor. Well, this was an old style one. Had a real tall back toilet. It's the kind of thing, by the way, that if you went to one of these trendy places on Melrose, you'd pay eight hundred bucks for this toilet. It's a nineteen twenties Art Deco kind of toilet. The va- the water came into this toilet at the top of the tank, which was and because it was a tall tank was up about three and a half, four feet off the floor. Now, when they swapped it out, they had a little problem because the water was up at the top, and the new low-boy, cheapo, piece-of-ass toilet they gave me had the water inlet at the bottom. So what they do? They just soldered on a long piece of copper pipe that's sticking out of the wall, going down four feet, and tying into their new piece-of-ass toilet. I was never consulted. They just took the toilet off. I wasn't there. I'm the new homeowner. They came into the house. They swapped it out. I think they take that Why? goddamn thing and just launch it right through City I Hall. Pussies. <laughs> Who did that? The, the, the previous owners? No. There's some sort of thing on the books that, you know, when the house changes hands, what? the city gets a crack at your ass <laughs> via their low flush toilet. Well, oh via whatever God. their code is at the point that the house is sold, right? Right. Oh, my God. Right. So, so that the guys come in and check in. They go, this has got to be brought up to code. Yeah, and they but just what about in. the part where they just do a... a butcher job on the thing like like yeah like i'm gonna sit there and have a bunch of copper pipes and elbows and stuff just sticking out of the wall at the towel bar height and then fishing its way down to the floor you effing retards and who do you talk to and who do you sue and let me say this too drew because i'm fired up now <laughs> I, I was thinking that we're in a you're in a day of burany it's not a tyranny anymore it's bureaucrat tyranny it's burany yeah it's a few left-wing pussy do-gooders over there trying to save everybody pussies Turning this into a country full of pussies. Where's your seat belt? Where's, where's your child safety seat? Oh, you don't have an airbag on your big wheel. We gotta sue you. <laughs> you ACLUers and all you wussies. I can't stand you coming into my house. We're driving. We drive this goddamn 10 freeway home every night. Uh-huh. Every single night we drive this uh, oh, godforsaken 10 oh, freeway. God. Yes. And let oh. me tell you something about the 10. The 10 has one of these, and you guys have seen these things in uh, maybe the city or town you're in. L.A. has them all over the place. And they've been there since that Steve Martin movie, the uh, L.A. <laughs> Stories they movie. The they, they put them up okay. the Olympics. They started putting up these, I'm sure, very expensive... Uh, billboards, billboards or signs that hang over the freeway and tell you, oh, we're going to tell them traffic conditions, we're going to give them weather reports, we're going to give them all sorts of information. <laughs> These things, in, like I said, yeah, they put them all up in the Olympics probably in 84, but they keep adding to them. And I'm yeah, sure they're more. several million dollars a piece because uh, they're these sophisticated pieces of electronics that go up and hang over. They're basically in, in the same position the old freeway signs would be in, but these are these high-tech, uh, you know, stadium boards that are right. going to give you all the latest information on what's ahead of you. We've driven this 10 freeway uh, every night for nine years. I have seen the sign that we pass under somewhere around La Brea lit up. Stop me if I'm exaggerating. Twice? Uh, let's say three times yeah. in the nine years that we've been driving. And those three times have said, like, have a nice day. So, never <laughs> no, been one, one time, goddamn piece of information. One time was information about the, the, for those of you out of state, the about 300 miles from here, the five grapevine uh, uh, yeah. closed down by snow or something. Some, some yeah. stretch of highway you didn't know miles about away. or care about. You didn't even have, like, the, the child abduction? Like, yeah, one of those. One of those. That one was of those. One, of those. one of those. One of those. Yeah. We and saw one of those. I immediately snapped into action. The amber alert. Like, amber alert. By, one of those. By <laughs> doing nothing. But <laughs> my head was on a swivel. I was looking for that chick. So the point is, uh, last night, the freeway completely closed down. We 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 came to a stop. Came to a stop, just came to a dead stop at the 110, which is about four or five miles down past this port. Right, right. I, uh, it just, they, they cut off the on-ramp to the 110, they detoured everybody, they stopped everything. Had the road signs out and the flares, and it wasn't an accident or anything. They were doing road work. It was planned. They had the cones and the... Right, they the, had to get permits to come in. They had to plan that They did ahead. the whole thing out. for hours, and the freeway, you know, came from 70 miles an hour to full stop. Full stop, Ooh. and you were just parked there. Now, here's the point. Hey, uh, fellas, with the uh, $8 million freeway sign, you (laughs) retards want to go ahead and put a little something up on the goddamn sign that says the goddamn freeway comes to a goddamn stop in four miles? Maybe you want to get off on La Brea, which I gladly would have done and gone home? Nope, just drive right into Satan's funnel. (laughs) Right into his funnel and stop. 
And I, I, I was talking to Drew on the phone. I was going insane with this freeway side. But here's the point. When do you guys put something on that board? Right. Does it work? Who's controlling it? Is he off that night? Does he not communicate with the other guys that are doing his stuff? He was stuck in the traffic. How many millions of dollars did you guys spend on these completely worthless electronic freeway signs that have touched no one's life and done zero? Look, you, you guys, went, if you'd spent all those millions of dollars and just bought everyone an air freshener for the car shaped like a pine tree, it would have been a much more effective campaign. We've yeah. got a lot more out of it. And they had a chance last night to do something. Yeah, hey, heads up. Hey, get, get off here. 110 close. Just that. That's all. 110 close. No, nope, not going to do it. No, no, just 110 close. 110 close. All right. Oh. That would have been good. Uh, really. Uh, yeah. If anybody knows any answers to these things, I would love to hear it. I, 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 I was sitting there and Travis was seething. Yeah, he was, he was going insane. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get in a Cessna and I'm going to load it up with plastique and I'm going to fly it into that thing. I'm, I'm going out in a blaze of glory. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. You know what they'll do after you do that? They'll put a monument up to me. No, they'll rebuild oh. it. Yeah, they'll <laughs> rebuild it. Another $8 million bucks. I, I swear, I don't know how much it costs. I've never seen one used, and it's never done anything except for, yes, in the last six months, somebody decided the Amber Alert should go on there. But they put the things up 20 years ago. Yep. Really? Yep. They, they, they knew one day they'd come up with the Amber Alert 20 years into the future? All right, I'm pissed. All right, Thomas Ian Nicholas is uh, here tonight. <laughs> God damn him. He's Thank uh, you. He here from uh, American Wedding. And we'll August be, 1st. We'll be right back. All right. It's a love line, everybody. Phone number 1 800 L V E 191. Love line. Thomas Ian Nicholas. Is, Thomas uh, said he was a caller of the show. He called. I never. Show? I never. I never got on. Oh, but, but it, you, you like, tried to call this show. Yeah. When? Like many, many years ago. Um, I want to say like when I. Well, I guess it wasn't junior. Junior. I guess it was like freshman. Many, many years ago. Six years ago. Okay. Yeah. Many, many. Well, no, like, like, no, like, right around the beginning of the show because I'm 23, so freshman in college. Uh, freshman in college. Freshman in high school, like 14, 15 wow. years old. Now, were you, did you grow up in Vegas? No, not, I was born there. You're born in Vegas. Born in Vegas. Uh, born outside, well, born in Vegas at the hospital. Right. Lived outside of Vegas for two years in Pahrump. Oh, really? Pahrump. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then uh, moved to Santa Cruz and then down to, oh, to Los Angeles. Pahrump and Santa Cruz are like the same place. I mean, they're same they're vegetation, same climate, same, climate, same, <laughs> same culture. <laughs> Yeah, they both have Same tax beaches. For rumps, yeah. like 127 in the shade during <laughs> if the summer. Shade. We had a tree outside the trailer. Oh, anyway. really? <laughs> was it it's like plaster, or was it an actual tree? No, it was a real tree. Wow. It was a real, real tree. As far as I've been told. The neighborhood. I, we couldn't even find the house, the, the trailer home last time. Anyway, whatever. Really? You were in a trailer home in Pahrump? Definitely. Was, definitely. Uh, don't they have those ranches, a uh, chicken ranch and all that That's stuff? what I hear. I haven't been there, I mean, since I was two, so I Oh, I know. see. And then and then Santa Cruz. And then Santa Cruz. That's smart. Yeah. R raising, uh, ra yeah, you can't, ra raising your kid in Pahrump is like, uh, you you just taking a bunch of sand, putting it in a microwave, and then putting your kid in there. there well, it go. was supposed to be like the next booming town, and it never boomed. Yeah, no. 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 What what what'd your dad do? Uh, I don't know what he was doing then. He he he. What I don't know what he's doing now. <laughs> no, I do. I do know. Uh, uh, craps. Vegas. He lives playing? in Vegas now. Yeah, he Me, deals. You, oh, he's a deals. Craps. Yeah. Oh, he does. Yeah. Do you, do you well, did he stick man? Did he stick man? Or I think he moved up to like pit boss or something. Oh. I don't know. I hear stories. I don't really know. So your dad, dad. was working. Oh, so he what left hotel? the family Where? early. Wait, what? Are you asking two questions? Yeah, for once in a what hotel? <laughs> Relax over there. Dude. He he left the family early. No, well, I mean, see, that's a whole another story. I mean, uh, dad uh, dad had dad had kids before. Uh huh. Left. He's left left and been left. Uh huh. Uh, but in this particular situation, uh, my mom left him. Uh huh. 
and legally they were or legally they were you know still married or whatever because she couldn't serve him divorce papers in Nevada and but my mom was a good mom you know so she got out when the getting was she good took and, you to Santa Cruz yes indeed uh, that's that's an angel yes that woman's a saint my mom was you know a single parent you know I mean and I couldn't even imagine having more than one kid I mean I was a I'm sure it's handful just being a single but parent. Only, but only child. Only child. All right. And uh, in Santa Cruz. But probably 70 or 80, 80 uh, half-brothers and sisters running around somewhere. That's exactly. Fantastic. All yeah. right. Well, yeah. good. I'm glad uh, I'm glad everything worked out. we got to go to break. Oh, we do? Yeah. Already? Yeah. Well, it's because of Drew's rant last, uh, really ate up the uh, last break. <laughs> hey, uh, sure, Dave, that was it. Just a quick story about me. Dave, 17. Um, Adam and Drew? Yeah. Yes. Okay, um, my mom is a piece of work. Mm -hmm. She hates, like, everybody. Mm -hmm. And recently she's really been taking that out on me. Uh, all right. Because, you know, well, I'm gay. All right. Hold on a second. got to take a break. Hold on, Dave. We'll be right this with you. It sounds like the uh, killer from the Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> it needs to take off its skin. It, he's a creepy sounding guy. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Got to, that's how mom, what, what moms that are paying the ass well, do to their kids. We'll uh, find out about uh, Gay Dave and his hateful mom after this. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew, phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Thomas Ian Nicholas is uh, here tonight. American Wedding is the name of the new movie, out August 1st. All right, now, when we left off, we are going to uh, speak to Dave, or we were speaking to Dave. Dave is... Uh, Digital seven, Dave. Digital Dave. He's 17, he's he gay. He's 38. Yeah, and he's got a mom like that's been a problem. Sucking on an ether rag. Dave? Uh, yes. Yes. So what's going on? Um, basically, my mom, she she hates everybody. Right. And when I say everybody, I mean, like, she could join the KKK. She Wait, hates, but you like, know what? That that makes it kind of easy for you. Then you, yeah. you can't go to her expecting anything other than negativity and hatred, and so you I should know. just stay away. And it's just, I try to do that, but she always just makes these comments, you know. You know, it... There's something well, that, that kids do with their parents is they keep going back to the person that they love, yeah. trying to get a different response. And yet when you keep going back to the same person, you're going to get the same response. You've got to just accept the fact that's how she is and just get on with your life. What? Uh, you're still living at home? Um, no, basically she kicked me out and now I'm living with my sister who's like 20. All right. Sounds like an improved situation, no? Well... My sister has kind of taken on some of my mom's neuroses, I guess you would call them. Yeah. Well, um, the, the ladies clearly aren't for you, Dave. You're, uh, you're out of school now? Um, I graduated when I was 16. I took the CHSPE. Perfect. I did, too. That's a great test. Are you working now? No, I'm not. I I'm took in it in school. my, my uh, in early 30s, actually. Uh, college. I'm turning 18 in, like, a college? week. College? Junior college, yes? Um, yeah. Okay. Well, enough of that nonsense. It's time to get a job. So, here's what you need to do, Dave. I'm going to give you the Corolla three-year plan. A, stop putting snow chains on that tire and focus on me. Oh, sorry. Um, wallet chain, I was playing with it. It's a nervous habit. I'm, like, really nervous right now. All right. Wallet chain, not much different than a snow chain. I think it's a credit for that. It's good. Well done. All right. First, uh, calm down. Secondly, okay. be nice to your sister. Kiss, I try to. Yeah, kiss her ass. I know you're angry. I know you hate the ladies, and I know your mom's a pain in the ass. Well, but I that, get along that, that, with my sister fine. Good, good. Be good to her because you're uh, living under her roof. Do you have a relationship right now? Um, no, I really have, like, I'm shy, and I'm not good at talking to people. Fine. You don't need one. That's, that's baggage. That's ass baggage. It's going to slow you down. <laughs> ass baggage. That's what they call No, it's it. a luxury to be in a relationship. you got to get a job first and get settled in and all that. Right. You need to get a gig. You need to do something. Waiter, busboy, get a job, drop out of that junior college. My dad, who's basically paying for everything, is saying, um, 
you know, that he's not going to let me have a job when I'm in school. Oh, so he... Mm. he your dad's paying for everything. I heard a smoke alarm off in the yeah. distance there. Yeah, um, that was a squeak. He's paying um, for the apartment my mm -hmm. sister and I are in, and basically the tuition and the books and all that stuff. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, cast aspersions on your father, but tuition for junior college is like nine dollars a year. I know, but both I, I could more. pay whatever's in my wallet right now. I could I could put you through junior college. Yeah, I know. <laughs> books that's uh, twenty eight dollars. <laughs> Dad's paying his way through junior college. The uh, the apartment though, that's something else. That's that's that's. Uh, now, do you have a good relationship with your dad? Um, yeah, but he lives in Bakersfield. And so uh oh. With him, I hate Bakersfield. Uh, yeah, I no, no town. kidding. You, you know why you hate Bakersfield? Everyone there's homophobic. No, because you're a mammal. <laughs> <laughs> Mammals hate Bakersfield. I'm telling you, and I'm not. I'm not. I'm no longer just limiting this to, to human beings. All the millions hate Bakersfield. You know why? Because they they don't. They cook. They have a brain. Yeah. They they don't have the reptilian brain. Well, also they the heat the, the kill Any, them. Anything that has a spinal cord cannot function in Bakersfield. All right, <laughs> Dave's. Oh my God, Bakersfield could have been. He could have could have been to uh, Pahrump. <laughs> but uh, I was waiting for the comment. I was waiting for the comment. Bakersfield is what basically what we call uh, Pahrump West. So, I mean, that's, <laughs> Northwest. Yeah, that's Northwest. what I call it. Yeah. All right. Uh, Dave needs to then. Dave needs to get a job and get some. Dave needs to focus on his right. Get some independent focus on his life. He needs to form a you know a job where he feels like he's doing something. He needs to focus on his school. If that's important to him. Get a relationship. Get a life. He needs to have a life. Right. Well, I mean, it's a, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just saying it doesn't, I mean, it sounds like a good deal, but not if you're also, like, there's always conditions with a good deal. Right. You know, I'll do this, but you can't have that. Right. I'll get your apartment, but you can't get a job. Well, th that's what it is. I mean, any time, I mean, here's what it is. When you're growing up, your parents are your bosses, and they go, we'll pay you, but you got to stay in school, and you got to do this, and you got to do that. And then later on... You move out of the house, and you have a boss, and he says, "I'll pay you, but you got to show up at this time, and you got to, you got to do this, and you got to do that." Basically, you go through your whole life doing that. Uh, he needs to get a boss, not a, not a parent. And as far as the dad goes, I mean, sorry, as far as the mom goes, screw her. She's a bitch. Uh, he, Don't he, keep he, going he, back he, to right, that well. Got to, right. There you go. Well, it's like the same thing. I mean, not to compare apples and oranges, but like. I tried to have a relationship with my dad, and it found that it was draining, and it caused rifts in the family, so I stopped. You. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah, yeah it was like, okay, that's not going to work. Great. Th there's something that's sort of liberating about giving something up that's not working. Totally. Any relationship. And uh, I, I know it's tough when, it's, when there's blood involved, but, hey, if they're unreasonable, and they're bigoted, and you're gay, hey, this ain't going to work. Okay. Sarah? Hello. What's going on? What's happening, baby doll? Sarah? Uh, you know, I'm sitting around on hold for oh at least boy. half hour. Wow. <laughs> yeah, right. Wow. Well, here, enjoy hold again. That's right. That's your best friend, baby. And this is Sarah number two, who's uh, 19. Sarah? Yeah? What's up? Hey, um, I just wanted to call and let you guys know that you do a great job, and you both helped me out so much about... Two years oh, ago. Oh, you are my favorite Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the evil Sarah we just spoke to. You're the good Sarah. No, I don't mind waiting to let you guys know how much you guys help so many people. Oh, well, how, how did we help you a few years ago? Well, um, I was sexually abused by um, two of my brothers on two separate occasions. You see that, Drew? We do do some good. <laughs> oh, that was the bad part. Yeah, that oh, was the bad okay. Part. All right, but then it gets good. Yes, it does. So um, it happened when I was first time in kindergarten and then second time when I was in fifth grade. Wow. And um, I didn't talk to anyone about it because, you know, for obvious reasons I figured I did something wrong or, you know, I just didn't talk to anyone about it. And then um, things were getting pretty bad my junior year in high school, so I called you guys to talk to you and see what happened and um you really helped me and the next day um i talked to one of my teachers at school and he helped me find a counselor and start working through it and so things have gotten a lot better great sarah fantastic See, life does not have to be miserable right 
No, it it was bad for a while, but, yeah. you know, I worked through it, and I'm in college, and things are great, and I have a great boyfriend who treats me well. That, and that speaks... he respects me and knows you know everything that happens. That speaks volumes about your improvement. Yes. That, that, is, that is the acid test. If you can have a relationship with a quality person who genuinely respects you and, and has good boundaries with you and who appreciates you, then you're you're done. You're good. Yes. All right. So. Well, another love line success story. That's uh, three in the nine years I've been here. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry. I'm sure there'll be more coming because you guys do great things for so many people. So where, I just wanted to call and say thank you. Where are you going to school? Oh, pardon me? Where are you going to school? I go to school in Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Where? Um, at a small private school. Roger Williams? Yeah. Hey, how did I know that? <laughs> no way. I, yes came there, way. I, I came there and spoke about a year ago. Oh, I. You know what? Oh. I knew that. I missed you by one year. Oh, so there you go. No worry. You'll, you'll have to come back. Uh, I'll, it's, I'll be glad to. It's easy. Just uh, pass the hat, scrape up about one hundred and thirty dollars <laughs> worth of change, and drew a flight halfway cross country. <laughs> no problem at all. All right. Well, thank you very I'll much. I'll not be and with it. I'll see you. Thank at you. School. You're Thanks fine, so. baby doll. Bye bye. All right. There you go. That's awesome. All right. Now that's the uh, that's the lovely, friendly Sarah. Now the evil. Sarah, now are we going back? Yeah, we're going back. Well, well Sarah, that was Sarah, Sarah, the the good Sarah, probably sounded an awful lot like the evil Sarah when we first got our hands on her. It's quite possible. Yeah. All right, evil Sarah. Wow, I am so sorry. Ah, oh, see <laughs> that? I'm trying to joke around. No, that's all right, you. baby doll. Sorry. I just give a little little tough love, little yank <laughs> on that chain. <laughs> Dog. Dog knows where to crap now. Oh. What's up? I, I, I can't Squirt wait for American wedding, wedding, by the way. Right. Can't oh. wait for uh, can't wait for the movie, huh? Right on. Oh, I'm very excited. Um, okay, my question basically stems from when I was four years old. I had an unfortunate situation where my mother took me away from my father, and I was sexually abused by her boyfriend. Right. And then my father found me. This took like three months. My father found me, brought me home, and he's wonderful. And everything in my life is pretty much okay, except I'm really worried about what the sexual abuse might have done to me. Did your, did your father uh, know about the sexual abuse when he got well, he, you? Yes, I mean, he, he knew about it, he was absolutely serious about it, and, you know, it, in, the, in the final analysis, there wasn't much he could do except just try to how, uh, how try old, to be as good as me as he how could. How old were you when this happened? I was four, three going into four. She took me when I was three and I had a birthday while I was with her. And, and did she sort of kidnap you? I mean, had your parents yeah, been, were they divorced it, before that? They were separated. It, it was a, a literal, like, personal kidnapping. My dad had me and my mother just came in one day and took me. Do you have a relationship with your mother anymore? Not a relationship. She helps me somewhat with my car payment now that I'm in college and otherwise I put myself through school. But it's more of like, here, honey, here's some money. What, it, what is, uh, what she say about the boyfriend? Um, she denies that any of it ever happened. There were a lot of drugs involved, okay. but, you know, is she among still an, them. Is she still an alcoholic or addict? Is she still what? An alcoholic or addict? Uh, she... Uh, yeah, it's a yes. Definitely not as bad as she used to be. Right, I, I honestly she, don't know, though. She's an addict. And then were you ever treated? Did you have any treatment for your abuse? For the abuse? Yeah. I was brought into psychologist when I was a kid, and I was examined, and that happened right after I came back, and I think after that, my father just wanted me to have as much of a normal life as possible. So you never had any formal treatment, really? I, I never had any long-term, like, ongoing therapy. Okay. Right. All right. Do you All right. remember the incident, or just know of it, or? Oh, no, I vividly remember it. I'm one of those people that can remember when they were really young. Okay. And me too. So, yeah. Only bad things, so. though. Yeah. And so now, what's your question? My question is, so, I mean, I like I say, I'm pretty well-adjusted in, in most areas of my life, putting myself through college, get good grades. I, I don't do drugs. But I feel like I'm, I, I have a very hard time saying no to men. And I, I, say, I think I sort of don't have enough confidence in myself as, and, uh, as a woman who can be discriminating. And well, because Sarah, of that, I've had relationships where I wasn't happy. Well, basically what that kind of victimization does to you is sort of etches in that victim role. You, be, you sort of have an implicit almost a biological memory of being a victim. And so some, when someone approaches you and sort of even hints at overpowering you, you immediately sort of go into this dissociative state 
where you're powerless and you can't you can't it, it's like you don't exist for a few minutes you just can't mobilize yeah. and that that's a pretty serious thing i mean that that's something that's going to trouble you a lot if you don't do something about but it but i i don't i'm i'm sure she does that but to to me it's even before that part i mean during the part where the guys asking her out and stuff well she she, she 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 of course is attracted also to guys that would be good victimizers right. that's what the other thing that does well too. i don't even know if these guys are victimizers they're horny 22 year olds right that's right <laughs> yeah yeah i mean all so, guys, every, anything so with a penis is a victimizer really I've learned that over one of the, the things that therapy would do for you is to get you to have experiences without sort of dissociating like you do to be able to have strong feelings and to be able to explore a relationship with somebody where you're present without sort of dissociation is the only word I can come up with. It's the only right. word to use. Yeah. Where you sort of devolve in the middle of an interaction. All right. So, but is yeah. it true too that you know you can you know change by choice? I mean, if you're aware of the problem, you can choose. Uh, no, that's actually that's actually no? that's actually one of the great misconceptions of our time is that this is a implicit biology that's wired into her brain. And to unwire it, all the wishing in the world, she has to go through a process of treatment where somebody is skillfully gets her through that. It's not a cognitive process. It's not a behavior. It's it's a rewiring, a reintegration uh, of certain kinds of emotions and experiences in an intersubjective exchange. Well, the uh, the the, uh, the trade by cho- uh, the uh, train by choice, or the uh, you know make your choices and and sort of train yourself away. It sort of becomes a chicken or the egg sort of argument. Shut your hole over there for a second, True. Which is, if you do get some therapy and you do sort of get your focus back, then you do start making those choices that right. don't lead you to trouble. And it does feel like a choice, and it is a choice. But the question is, could you have ever made that choice without the therapy? And the answer is probably no. Well, no, but I'm just saying that understanding, like you, you, you're, you're. You feel a certain way towards a certain type of person. Right. You understand the problem. Yes. You make a choice you that's different, that. but you but you don't feel the same sort of thing. So you're still attracted the other way. But if you if you're aware of that, if you keep that up long enough, yes. eventually you will rewire. Well, you, you, and you yeah. have and you have started with making a choice. There is something to that. You're in your sixties, though. You, you le- no, no, I've been there. I've been yeah, there. Though. You, have, you have a point. You, you learn to read your own behaviors and attractions, so you don't make a tra- the situ- You don't put yourself in situations where you're going to be feel powerless be victimized absolutely that's a piece of it but this whole and i'm realizing you haven't done this in your therapy yet this is speaking volumes about where you are in your treatment adam i'm um, kidding you're a mess but, compared to me but <laughs> it, it, it is the your the, train wreck the ability you're like a, you know what you are compared to me you're like a uh, you're a kite that got caught up in one of those tree mulchers that's what you look at just i'm just wrapped around a high tension wire it's a Please, but, crazy wife of yours, <laughs> dragging you around by the nostrils. <laughs> Be that as it may, that, that this experience, the whole notion of dissociation and how... Can't even get a massage. I don't want one. Let me tell you something, everybody. Drew and I were just away on a, on a weekend with the, uh, with the missuses uh, in Santa Barbara, and I, yeah. I thought about it. Everybody... Everybody signed. We, we we went to this. Oh, Drew! Now now you're in trouble. We went we went away for this uh, compensation. Well, it took the guy took the guy uh, took the guy nine years to buy a car he wanted. By the way, talking to me every night about uh, what kind of car he should get. He finally pulled the trigger on that. Now we went away to Santa Barbara because uh, KJEE our affiliate up there gave us a little uh, spa weekend. So everyone went up there, you know, hang out by the pool, eat some nice dinners, enjoy ourselves, and all that. Then came, like, spa day. So the wives were like, okay, I'm getting a shiatsu massage, followed with the Swedish this or that. My wife signed me up for a nice massage. What did Drew do? He did the beach challenge. That's where him and a bull dyke go. Uh, they, they basically eat sand for two hours while we're getting massaged. And I thought to myself as I was getting my rub down, I thought, Drew can't let it go, can he? It's a Sunday. You're at a four-star result. Uh, resort, you can't just lay down and get a massage. You got to no. be on the beach doing push-ups, like uh, Richard Gere, an officer and a gentleman. <laughs> really, it was great. Yeah, it was great. Couldn't couldn't just let it go. Yeah, who needs therapy? Thank you. I don't go know. ahead. It depends on how you look at these things. Um, doing but- push-ups on a Sunday to spa <laughs> in the sand, getting attacked Felt by bees great. and dogs. Felt great. It felt you know a massage would have felt better. If I could physically have felt it, better <laughs> if you could have let go enough to enjoy yeah, a somebody would have been doing fantastic. something for you and you not uh, answering your pager while you're running in place. So the, the point is <laughs> that, <laughs> that lifting logs over his head like Rocky IV, <laughs> taking cabers and heaving them. <laughs> That's right. Throwing the willy. Yeah, he's doing the uh, horseshoe crab toss. <laughs> 
he actually part of the part of the exercise is you have to t- drag a beached whale uh, back out into into the tidal waters. I mean, it's really it's a tough challenge <laughs> at beach. You know, two hours of running around a beach like a retard. Technically, those belugas are not whales. <laughs> yeah. but, but, Go ahead. But go uh, ahead, Mr. You were saying, so dissociation, it, it, we're realizing, is more and more of an important process that goes on, particularly in trauma survivors. And it's a it's a wired-in mechanism. It takes quite a bit of sort of skillful teasing in order to get people not to rely on that as a way to deal with interpersonal challenges and stress. And she needs to be able to be sort of frustrated and challenged in a relationship and have other kinds of other ranges of experiences of feelings other than sort of caving into the this primitive dissociation uh, that she's right. so prone to do. And you well, don't you don't do that unless you're in the hands of somebody who's observing what you're doing who well, understands the nuances uh, of what's Well I guess I, I guess I'm just of the frame of mind where I'm really fortunate that I have You don't you, you haven't know, been traumatized. Well I, that's not yeah, really well, you've been, you, he grew up in Perump. He's got some issues. His dad was but, a chronic gambler, went around screwing everyone in town and knocking out kids. He was abandoned as a young boy. No no but I'm just Struggling with his homosexuality, <laughs> he's got full-blown AIDS. I mean, this kid's got troubles, Drew. I'm just saying, I, I American Pie. I'm very for- American Wedding coming right. up August first. <laughs> I'm very fortunate to have a good mom who pays enough attention to kind right. of be like that family right. therapist. She's competent. Sort of thing. Yeah, she, yeah. She you, gave you what you need in order to build. And a, still does. Yeah. He went to Santa Cruz. You know, a good, stable mom. Yeah. And and let me just well, let's just move on here. But let me just say this. Uh, some some adversity can be overcome. Yeah. Uh, sexual abuse on the girls yeah. is uh, that's wiring, therapy. It's, it's time wiring, to head yeah. to the therapist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. She's having sexual compulsions now. She's no, I understand. Doing too many yeah. guys and easily victimized. And she, right. It'd probably be easy to overcome it, really, but it probably needs professional. Well, not that easy. And how pissed would you be as a dad if uh, your crazy old lady snatched up your four-year-old, took her on the road, you spent three months look, looking for her, and then you find her? And some guy uh, answers the door in his jockey shorts, uh, mm-hmm. drinking a uh, Bud uh, Tall Boy. Yeah, it's like, know, it's yeah, horror, yeah, horror yeah, I'm done with her. You can take her back. Uh-huh. I mean, like, wouldn't you just, would you go in, would you just be insane? I, I'd kill the guy. You just go insane, yeah, right? For sure. Beth. Yeah. You're 21. Yep. What's up? Okay, here's my question. Last night, I was having sex with my boyfriend. This has happened like three or four times. He, you know how sometimes it slips. And you kind of got to put it back in. Yep. He loses his erection. Like, it's just gone. Well, it it, it slips because he's, he's losing his erection. Right. That's why it slips. Is that why that happened? Well, what? Uh, why uh, did that happen? Let's, let's, let's challenge. Let's take a break? Yeah, let's take this apart <laughs> okay. next time. How long have you been doing radio, Drew? Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Thomas E. and Nicholas is uh, here. Hold on, Beth. And we're going to open him up like a can of tuna during the break. We'll find out. We'll find the abuse. Yeah. Uh, American Wedding. We'll be right back. We'll get to Beth after this. If you want to sing, yeah. uh, hear the words. What is this? What is Bruce, this? Uh, Drew's too depressed to sing along. He just wants to listen tonight. What is a mazee? These are the actual words? I never knew that. Oh, yeah. I always wonder what the heck they were saying. Yeah. All right. True, you don't, don't raise the roof. It <laughs> doesn't look right. Thomas C. and uh, Nicholas is uh, here tonight from uh, American Wedding, which uh, comes out uh, August 1st. I don't know uh, I don't know what other uh, comedies are uh, lurking around the corner, but uh, I haven't seen any. Seen Movie comedy? Yeah. I don't know. This is it. you got to see this. this. We picked a good time, up, apparently, then. Yeah. We are alone in the comedy against... All the action and yeah. visual effects. Be up against uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, which I still want to see, but uh, have it's not. Same here. It's good. Seeing. It's uh, good. I heard Jenny Depp's out. great in it. Yeah, I heard he's amazing. Uh, yeah, he was. And, uh, I don't know what the hell else is. There's a bunch of stuff out there I want to see and never see anything. But I'm going to make up for that next week. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, well, we, Peter Wilson would not come in here still, which I want to choose in that uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, which yeah. my kids loved. Really? Was it? It was it good? I read the I read the script on that, but I didn't. I, I didn't, didn't say it was good. I said my ten year old kids loved ah. it. And I said Peter Wilson was good. I heard it was a flaming turd. It just seemed, uh, you know, I I don't know, but it seemed like uh, they'd been sitting on it for a while, and then all of a sudden tried to, but try I, to give it the box in the box office. The script was awesome. I saw the preview and I was like, "Yep, there's another good script gone awry when they made it into a movie." Oh, really? You read the script? Yeah. Did you? Was I auditioned for it. Auditioned? I was doing Stealing Sinatra, and I put myself on tape and sent the tape in. What which, role were you going to play? 
Or the, 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 the Dorian, Dorian Gray? Conry Schroll. No, yeah, I was going for Sean. Oh, the Conry's. young guy. The, the young guy. Man. The yeah. whatever. Tom Tom Sawyer. Yeah, Tom Sawyer. Yeah. So true. You remember. you saw the movie. Yeah. Not didn't hold together well for you. No. Right. I, I really thought Peter Wilson was excellent. Very intriguing. Just it, a pleasure to watch. An interesting. That La Femme Nikita. Check? Right. Yeah. Oh, Drew likes her. Yeah. You know, she's blonde and she's crazy. <laughs> That's what Drew likes. Beth. Yeah. I'm <clears throat> You're 21. Yeah. What's up? Okay, so I, what I was saying before we went on hold there is yeah. that my boyfriend, when we have sex sometimes, he, like, loses his erection, like, right in the middle of everything. Right. Uh-huh. Why, why would that happen? Bummer. <laughs> no well, He's not attracted to you, <laughs> but No, that has nothing to do with it. How, how long into the act does this happen, usually? Um, it depends. The first time it happened, you know, like, within the first ten minutes or so, he just, and, you know, it's lasted anywhere from, like, two or three minutes until last night. I'm not kidding. It was, like, five minutes where he was trying to do, I don't know what, with, I'm sorry to say it, but mush. And I'm just like, you know, yeah. what am I supposed to do with that? And with mush? I, yeah. Is this before or after he's done? Before. Really? That's why I was confused because I'm thinking, God, is he done already? But then, you know. You is know. There's no, nothing worse than when you, it's like that shoelace where the tip got <laughs> chewed off and you're trying to push it through the boot <laughs> eye opening and it's like it ain't making it. And occasionally you get a little yeah. strand and then you pull that and it just goes, it starts yeah. unraveling. No. Yeah, it's a disaster. Is, is he on any medication? You got to lick it and no, twist it. I don't think no. so. I, I don't know. <laughs> You might want to ask him about that. One of my friends mentioned, would drugs cause that? Because I know he has done drugs in the past. Mm. Well, ecstasy sometimes will do that. But no, it's usually, if somebody's using a lot of drugs regularly, it can do that. But if it's occasional use, no, it's not. How old is he? He's 21. And can the penis be brought back to life? Yeah, that's the whole thing that's weird is after like five minutes or so, you know, he's kind of got to do his own thing. And then it kind of, I guess you could call it, comes back. Is he wearing a condom? The first time it happened, he was, and I thought maybe that was the right, problem. Right. But then there's been like two or three other times where it's happened, and he wasn't. Is that what he told you? <laughs> <laughs> and he's not. It's it, he's not having an orgasm. He's just losing his erection. Pretty much, yeah. How's he doing in the relationship? Does he seem to be into it? Is he? I think. Well, he seems to be. Is he super into it? Like he's very excited about being in this relationship. I think so. We, we've been. But but, he's, but some guys, when they're when they're really attracted to a woman, are real excited about the relationship. They get too anxious. Yeah. And they well, they have like a performance anxiety. They can't function. Could I? I don't and that's actually a compliment in that case. So it's yeah. not that he's not attracted to you. It's that he's too attracted to you. Yeah. Well, that I don't know. That could be because we've been kind of dating on and off for like the last six months. I'm a single mom, and I try. I'm trying really hard not to like dive into anything major and he mm-hmm. just wants to be around all the time and oh yeah there we uh, go he's, he's I, their, their, num- their numbers don't match i bet you all right let's uh, yeah. let's what? let's hey let's we'll talk, talk about, about this yeah. all right so what's going on here yeah. is beth is a hot chick right who may be a eight or a nine but because she's a single mom her number got lowered a little bit okay she is now her, her value on the open market is decreased a little bit. But he wants to be around all the time. Well, well this, his number is this way guy down. could be a five and a half. Oh, I got you. <laughs> Normally, I'm catching on now. And he's now going for a nine. He can't he, believe he, it. He, his doesn't, head's he doesn't get a shot at an eight or a nine, yeah. but he does because uh, she's having a fire sale because of the kid. And he's <laughs> and, able to and, get in and, and buy And also, I, I'll, put a, I'll paint another piece of her story. I bet she's gone with the bad guys, and this is going to be the nice guy. This is her attempt to be with the right kind of guy. Yeah, she was, huh? you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, no, that, well, that definitely could happen. Nice guy gets with the, the bad girl in bed, and it's kind of like a different story for, you know. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Beth? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, how old is your child? <laughs> um, she will be turning five. I had her when I was 16. All right. Ooh. So this is this is the bad boy thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. you've, you've uh, in the past been attracted to some bad boys yeah her dad's a real ass yep all right and this guy's put money on this this guy's a nice guy he's a very sweet guy i've known him since i was in like the fourth grade oh oh, oh my god this guy no wonder he's going insane he's been waiting (laughs) since he was nine and this is not the kind of guy you would normally date right no probably not right and the, the, the reason you're wanting to take it slow 
is because you he he's not a bad boy. He's a he's a nice guy. Yeah. He's not your he he's a good guy. And rationally, you think I should be with a guy like this, not a guy like the ex father, yeah. like you know the ex husband or boyfriend. True. But I'm just not as attracted to him as I could be. Meanwhile, he's going insane and turning to mush. Yes. <laughs> Quite literally. So well, that that that's his problem. Yeah, he's too into this. Too much. Yeah. He's, he's, and it's and, like and he's he might he might also be sensing that you're sort of not as into it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I hope not. Yeah. Well, okay, I have another question. <laughs> <laughs> Pick up on that. Yeah. Oh, if he sees that, whoa. Boy, would he feel bad if he knew how I actually felt. <laughs> <laughs> no. There was a night not too long ago where my kids were gone for the night. I had people over to my kids? house. Kid or kids? I have two kids. Ooh. The other one, the other one is two. with the same father, but he will be. He's. I don't have him as much. He stays with his dad. Much. How old is he? He'll be three. He's two. Cranking out two kids with I'm, the uh, king a hole. Huh? Should a yeah, two-year-old somehow. But, That's yeah. great. But no, okay, so I had him. This guy that I'm seeing here at my house, and we had sex that night. And I don't know if this. Everyone keeps. My girlfriends keep telling me that it's not normal, and he couldn't have done it. <laughs> but. He, he, I guess you could say, ejaculated 12 times in one night. Like, yeah. That's how many times. <laughs> one, one for every uh, semester of junior high. <laughs> it didn't get you. But, I mean, is that possible? Like, everyone right. keeps telling me, no, he couldn't have. Yeah, thought. I think a guy that who had his ultimate experience could do this. Yeah. We, but, but then his soul is... Uh, he sort of ejected into purgatory and he tries so, to mush. You know? He he isn't so he he isn't he hasn't wasn't a big hit with the ladies up until no, he, he met was you. A big dork in school, yeah. Now yeah. he's not a big dork and coincidentally no. that's the problem. Yeah. No, he is a big dork now. Yeah, that's the problem. What are you saying, Drew? The big dork ain't so big. You get my <laughs> No but oh, I'm the dork. Sh- oh I okay, see. Okay. Thank you, Drew. Sorry. Uh all right. What's he do? Something with computers or something? No, he's working construction now. Construction? Yeah. Nice guy working construction? I guess. Nice guy dork working construction. <laughs> wow. Construction or like land development or something? No, he builds trusses. Builds trusses? Trusses yeah. for like weddings and stuff? What? No, 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 no. <laughs> Trust trusses ceiling. I know. I'm just, oh, we can right. go out and I'll just point it out. Yeah, that's that's what it is. I'm just kidding. Right. It was a joke. All right, so he 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 builds trusses and yeah, he uh, went from being a fat dork in school uh-huh. to now he's this buff tan, you know. He's actually that's really on the outside, but on the inside he still feels like a fat dork. Well, he does. But I, I uh, okay, that. so Beth, here's the thing. Forget about his performance. What's up with you? It does. It sounds like you sort of got one foot in the uh, relationship I, I pool and the other on the I deck. Don't, I don't know what's up with you. You're not into him. Kind of yes and kind of no. Well, the kind of yes part is the part that wishes you could be into someone like this, but the no part is all of you. Mm. It's the, it's the depths of you is the no. The no part is causing the mush. Yeah, maybe. And it's hard to argue Possibly. with that part. <laughs> On the other hand, the no part of you is sort of the disturbed part that's going to keep being attracted to the a-holes. Yeah. Yeah, so do you think you could gut it out with this guy? Mm, she's or doing that. I don't know. Well, see, that's the other thing. It's not fair to him. Is that he has made comments also about how, you know, he's glad we're taking things slow and all this. He's just saying that because he doesn't want to freak you out anymore. Yeah, you're taking things slow after the 12th time he ejaculates. Right. right. (laughs) (laughs) How slow. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I'll lose my my body fluid. Yeah, I mean, when he's on his games, 30, 40 (laughs) squirts from that hose of his. All right, so, Beth. Yeah. You uh, let's forget about his penis for a second here. <laughs> okay. You, you you need to do a uh, little soul searching. Uh, I'm sure you do. If, if you think you're ready to sort of be with a good and stable guy, yeah. then you should, even though it's a there's some discomfort involved, move forward and attempt to pr- have the relationship progress. Right. But if you're just kidding yourself and wasting his time, you should break up. <laughs> and I predict his penis problem will go away the more secure. He feels about the relationship. Yeah, the more into it you actually are. And here's the problem with Beth. If Beth was 28 instead of 21, I would say, hey, it's time to grow up yeah, yeah. and it's time to push. Right. At 21, unfortunately, she could have another five, eight years worth of screwballs. Yeah, the problem is she has two kids. That's the. I know, problem. but you can't, you can't yell at someone to grow up at just because they have two kids. Yeah. Right. Again, the Kobe Bryant syndrome. What? Oh, got too married young. too soon? Yeah. yeah. All right. Miranda? Yeah. You're 21? Uh-huh. What's up? Well, I was calling because 
Some guy called in last night and said that the Trojan super condoms kept breaking on him. Yes. Well, that happens to my boyfriend and I probably about 90% of the times that we use those condoms. I am allergic to latex, mm. and so that's pretty much the only option we have other than the natural... Uh, animal skin. Animal What's the name skin. of this again? Let me write this the, down. The polyurethane condoms. Have yeah. you tried okay. other kinds of polyurethane condoms? Those are the only kind that we've been able to find. Hold okay. on. Let me let me just clarify the chick percentage <laughs> e- equation. 90% to a chick is 3 out of 10 times. No, I'm saying <laughs> every time we use them, just about. It's like we'll be having sex, really? and then he'll be about to come, so we'll switch position, we'll pull it out, make sure everything's okay. Put it we'll, put it in the ceiling fan, and we'll then... Put it in the ceiling fan, right. No, we'll go back in, and then he'll come, pull out, and the condom will practically be not there, if not stuck, like, way far inside of me. How, how is it that it doesn't break the entire time you're having sex and only breaks at the moment of ejaculation. You know, I was wondering that myself. That must mean he's not creating enough space at the tip. He's got to roll it down for it. No, because I'll put the condom on myself and, you know, I make sure that everything's right. You know, it's very important to me that I do not get pregnant, so... Wow. She's holding this dork up to a schematic she has <laughs> up on the wall. Like what are you with the blints make? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and why not use the animal skins more regularly? Have you ever opened one and smelled it or looked at it? They're really... Yeah, it's a little cat gut. What's the big they're deal? They're not appetizing. What all. is it? Is it lamb something? Yeah, yeah they're lamb skin. Yeah. It's like lamb intestines. Yeah. Lamb skin. <laughs> all right, but uh, you, 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 eat so- really you eat sausage, right? <laughs> no, actually, I don't. Uh-huh. I don't crap on my valid points here. <laughs> Never had a hot dog, sweetie? Uh, not since I was about 10. All right, but when you're 10, you love that thing, didn't you? Oh, yeah. That was course. nothing but intestine. <laughs> no, All right. No good, I, I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Um, nice try. So, well, how about another brand of, of polyurethane? Polyurethane. We product. haven't been able to find anything. That's our problem. Yeah. Mm. Go online. Yeah. And how about uh, and, and latex? No way, huh? No, not at all. You have a severe latex. I, I was hospitalized by a dentist one time. It was very gruesome. Yeah. By a dentist yeah. glove? He had sex well, with her. They used, yeah. They <laughs> <laughs> used a latex gun. It was like a latex dam. I, yeah. They, they put in your they mouth. put in your dentist. mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's a bad sign, uh, by the way. I've had him bust out that latex dam. Peanut allergy? What do you think? I was hospitalized. I'm going to. All right. Oh, wait a minute. Who am I speaking to? Yeah. Her. Miranda? Yeah. Where, are you allergic to anything else? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay. All right. All you're right. saying. Uh, <laughs> go, <laughs> go on the internet and see if you can find a polyurethane or a uh, yeah, polyurethane uh, kind of yeah. that works. Or ask your pharmacist but, to order stuff. So, I mean, Drew. For sure. Is, okay. They, they make latex. They make polyurethane. Yeah. Uh, is are we now finding out that uh, just through our own sort of uh, you and I are finding out to our own little retarded research we're doing here the that, poly- there, that there may be some problem with the polyurethane in my head I keep thinking there's some maybe there's some special accommodation people need to use in terms of how they put it on or something than how they're applying well, it well polyurethane is probably not the best material to make a condom out of, or they would have just made them all out of polyurethane. Right. right? I want, but I've not read anywhere where they say they're of a, they a profound never make it, rupture they, rate. I wonder if maybe you have to really be super careful about how you maintain them. Maybe they get sort of crystal or dried out if they're not in the right temperature. Drew, or, how about my idea for the uh, PVC piping condom? This is more of a jacket that goes around the penis. Never, I've never heard this. Two-inch PVC pipe. Just go ahead and you know, use the hot glue, put the cap on the end of it. And a couple holes on the side just wrapped around. It's like a clown's nose. Yeah, around the penis. Right, the penis actually drops into it. It's like a shipping container that you would ship why a poster in. Why hasn't somebody thought of this sooner? I don't know. You can reuse it. It's practically indestructible. And, and that sharp edge, you can just cut it sharp th- at the end and it'll feel great in the woman. No, no, no. You, you cut it and you put the cap. Oh, it's like a, it's it's like, put a cap it's on like the a It's like a faux penis. Yeah, like you're, if you're stubbing out some uh, plumbing on your lawn. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah. Just put that little cap on the you end. You want a sharp end to step on. You, you want right. to round it off. Yeah, use inch and a half or two <laughs> inch uh, uh, inner di- inner dimension, inner diameter. Hmm. Strap that thing on. It's like yeah. a helmet. I, albeit the yeah. sensation is not as great as a condom, but you can reuse them. They're impact resistant. Well, that sounds that ever, sounds healthy. Would you ever take it off? Don't no, have I to. wouldn't. No, no, of course not. No, <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> and washing machine safe. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's take a break. That's what we need to do. We're going to regroup. We're going to come back. Who's 
music cues on Sue's on Blues. Come on. Pews on Go. Pews on Cues at. Raise the roof. Music cues on Sue's on Blues on Pews on Pews on Cues at. Yeah, that's all you do. It's all Kizza. It's all Kizza. The sound. One Z. One Zoom Zoom Z. Yeah, true. That's my boy. Yeah. In the hizzy. Yoo-hoo. Thomas Gazette. He and uh, Nicholas. <laughs> I can't pronounce any of those things. Here tonight from uh, American Wedding, which is uh, coming out uh, August 1st. It'll be the uh, the third and the last of the uh, American Pie installments. We yeah. are done. What's the story on this one? <laughs> Uh, Besides the wedding, it's funny. That's that's pretty much it. With once you you know once you get to the third one, you're just there just to make everybody laugh. But there's there's a story too. Right. I yeah. mean you know, no, it's no. the wedding and how it goes. I mean you know take the characters, put them in the wedding. Right. How you know, could they screw it up? All these remember when they, the movie was first coming out, all these guys showed up here. Yeah, the whole cash <laughs> was here. Yeah, we, I wasn't here then. No, it was uh, Jason. You guys didn't Allison. invite me. Oh, was the whole cast? Yeah, yeah. Was like five of them showed up. Right? Oh, that's craziness. Wes. Yeah. How you doing? Good. You're 20. Yeah. Girlfriend says. My she, girlfriend has something called herpegina. It's in her throat. No, it's called herp angina. Herp angina. Herp angina. It's a sore throat. Herpes, herpes vagina. Oh so, my! It's my sister's nickname in uh, college. It's probably actually. not. Vagina. It's just a sore throat. It means nothing. Not, weird. not it. No, no, that's fine. Hey, Drew, yeah. don't they know enough not to start stuff with the herpy thing? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know it freaks people out. Of me. All right. All right. All right. Now you still can. It's contagious potentially, but not a STD. Yeah. So just don't kiss. Wait till she gets well. All right. Good times. Good times. All good right. times. All right. All right. Herp, herp vagina. Mm-hmm. Is that how it is? Yeah. Herp- Herp- one word? Herpangina. And what is that? Just sore throat, basically. All right. One just can't call it a sore throat, huh? I'm not certain. So it's, it's not a, anything to do with, it's not herpangina. Not herpes, no. <laughs> All right. Strep throat, better or worse than herpangina? Better? Better. Really? Well, I don't know how to answer because it, it, it's... No, her- forget it. I'm bored now. <laughs> Sarah? Fourth my own question. Hello? Uh-oh. Ooh. 16. How'd you know? Oh, yeah. That's right, huh? <laughs> Got that? Yeah. Uh, okay. Do you want me to tell you my question? Yeah. Okay. Um, I had a verbally abusive boyfriend. He's my ex-boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And um, I have a new boyfriend now, and he's really good to me. And we're getting along really well, and we've been dating for six months now. But the problem is, is that now that it's different, I feel like I'm the verbally abusive one now. Like, I'm the... Here's the deal. Here's the deal with having been a victim. When you get out and have relationships, you play one of two roles. You're either the victim, or you're the victim. Spider-Man. Or you're the victimizer. Oh, or Spider-Man. Damn it. Uh, so, so if you're not being the victim, you end up being the victimizer. Mm-hmm. And, and you end up trying to coax him into victimizing. Vic- into victimizing you. Yeah. So you start getting abusive and see if you can uh, fire him up a little bit. Yeah. The abused becomes the abuser. That's, That's right. That and I, I feel so bad, and, you know, I mean, he's, he's, just, he's just such a nice person, and, you know, he's had, like, he's really, like, had, like, a thing for me for a very long time. And, Uh-oh. You know, More nice guy stuff. Yeah. Well, what, it, was your dad verbally abusive? Oh, no, my dad is the most wonderful person ever. My mom, oh. I have the most wonderful family. I love my family so much. Really? I have a wonderful family. Well, then you should knock this off. Yeah, I know. It's just that... <laughs> It's really? I no, no six-year-old chick loves her mom and her dad that much. No, I love them. They, they're so good to me. See, it's got to, it's got to come out somewhere. Were you, you adopted? Know? No. Where? I'm, no. I'm just really lucky. Very lucky. Where did you learn how to be an abuser, or to be abused? Well, um, I'm the only. Video I'm games. the only girl. You know, I'm the little girl, and I have two older brothers. I have two older brothers, and my the brothers, you know, when, when they were little, of course they would, you know, they would bug me, you know. I mean, my middle brother, Victor, he still bugs me sometimes. Like, he'll call me like a slut, or he's such a slut. Look at the way you dress, blah, 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 because, like... That's your little brother. No, no, it's my older brother. It's, like, my older brother, because I have two older brothers, but he's, like, the middle one. He's the little older brother. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, because, like, his friends are always teasing him and stuff. Oh, your sister's so hot, and and he'll be like, oh, yeah, shut the fuck up, you know. Oh, she's such a slut anyways. You can hook up with her. I wouldn't give a crap. And it's like... Okay, well, it sounds like an ideal 
setting. Perfect. To be raised perfect. In. Perfect. 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 Non dysfunctional. Yeah. Your, your, your brother's calling you a slut every 10 seconds. Yeah, maybe your parents, uh, as nice as they are, need to do a little bit of parenting here. I, mean, I tell my mom and dad all the time, and they, they're so hard on me. I mean, but they're wonderful people. I mean, I know they're doing everything because they they're delights. Yeah, delightful. Perfect parents. Perfect. Well, what's your dad do for a living? Well, my dad retired five years ago. He was a mechanical engineer engineer for British Petroleum. Aha! <laughs> I knew it, Drew. And your mom? My mom's a special education teacher for fifth and sixth grade. Mm-hmm. Now, do they take the dumber teachers and put them with the special ed kids because no one's going to know? Oh, that's so mean. I mean, I'm just saying, who would know? It's not like they're going to call them out. Or... That's wrong. <laughs> that's wrong. Uh, six times six, 34. <laughs> that seems about right. Mm -hmm. All right, hey, Sarah. Yeah. Uh, Ten seconds ago, you had the world's greatest family, and now it sounds like maybe you are a little bit angry about all the verbal abuse you take from your brothers and how your parents lack don't of, step in lack and of intervention defend parents, you. And they weren't maybe available when you needed them. Was a lot, and they're hard on you. There's a lot of stuff going on here, Sarah. They may need to be seen by you as perfect, but they may not be so perfect. Right. Not that they're bad, not bad people, but, but just yeah, but we, nobody's we, perfect. Yeah, you yeah. Don't, we don't want you to hate them, but just be realistic, and maybe you can find out where some of this uh, energy comes that you have right. toward your boyfriend. But look, if if you know you weren't abused per se, and the family's intact and everything, yeah. why don't you just cut it out? Cut it out. Just yeah. keep an eye on yourself. No, it's so much trauma. It's like a soap opera. Okay, no, my dad doesn't like black people. And I'm dating a black person. Oh, uh, all right. It's payback time now. Yeah. And Dad, then, I want you to meet Lucius. <laughs> yeah. Payback he, time. He's, like, so nice, though. I mean, he's, like, he's going to go on a oh, trip for football uh, and stuff. And you were so full of S, Sarah. It's amazing. I'm not full of BS. You, oh, you are, kiddo. You are. Well, it's like yeah. it's either bogus or you're or you're just you're, you're just you're just yeah completely. you're kidding you're just delighting in creating this this uh, uh, chaos and, and drama. Was, would that not be an important point to bring up in in the beginning? Here, here's that plays the deal. a part in Here's it. the deal: if your dad hates black people something up and you dad. bring home a black boyfriend, it's because you hate your dad. Right. Or anything that your your parent is against, you bring home that. Absolutely, that, that, that is, is a what it is. F you to dad. That yeah. is f you. Yes, yeah. no, nothing wrong. With a little jungle fever, I, I have and many, wrong many movies that, that uh, <laughs> depict such interactions. I know you're into that, but not not a, and nothing wrong with you for dad. But don't pretend that everything is perfect. Then you got some stuff. Take a look. I, no, no, but that's that's the that's the point though. That's a that's a funny personality. Like, oh, everything's great because I'm getting back at dad. Yeah. All right, we're gonna take a break. Uh, by the way, I'm gonna pay my dad back that way too. Oh, that's be great. He's real warm on the blacks. So I'm gonna bring home a big black man. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Let him walk in on you, too. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the show, everybody. I give it an eight and a half tonight. Yeah. Solid show. Good calls. Thomas, thank you very much for oh. uh, coming out. Thank you very, very much for having me. Everyone uh, go see uh, American Wedding, which is coming out on August 1st. And then when uh, Stealing Sinatra, is that what it is? Yeah. Stealing yeah. Sinatra. Stealing Sinatra. When that uh, comes out. An L.A. DJ. Come on, uh, <laughs> come on out. Yeah. Come on yeah, out. It's, give, it's a shameless plug. Give him another plug and, uh, and uh, give him the props. Thanks uh, for coming in. Always good to see you. And until next time, it's Adam Crawler for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.